Right now, you're looking down nine feet of a shower curb top. And in particular, this is a granite prefabricated backsplash intended to go with a prefabricated countertop. Now, if you're in the market and you're looking for ideas on your own bathroom remodel and you're considering a prefabricated countertop for your vanity, this is definitely a video for you. Now we're going to go over a few different ideas. The first one being why this could be the perfect solution for your bathroom. The next part will be what it takes to modify a backsplash and turn it into a shower curb top. And the third part will be some of the design ideas, a why it's, it will be easier to install some of the tiles throughout the rest of your bathroom when you don't use this as a backsplash, as well as aesthetically what it does for the rest of your bathroom. So the first things first is why is this such a great solution? Why could this be perfect for you? Well, it's a single piece that's very easy to install. You just plop it in place and you'll have, it's easy to make sure that it's level from side to side, as well as make sure that you have the proper slope going down, directing water into the drain. So from an installation perspective, it's very fast, very clean, very easy. Now from a design perspective, you're tying it in and this matches perfectly with your countertop. So that's another reason why you might want to use this here instead of up where your vanity is. From a functional perspective, it's perfect because it's a single piece of stone. There's no grout lines inviting water to go down below and you having to rely on the waterproofing membrane that still needs to be installed despite the fact that this is a big piece that goes over the entire top. You still have to have waterproofing. Now, when you install a glass wall or a shower door system, you don't want to drill into the stone. You will still be using silicone to keep it in place, but your drill points will be within the wall, attaching it where water is less likely to pool, it'll drain off. If you drill into the stone itself, you risk cracking, as well as an open invitation to water to go down. And there's no guarantee necessarily that when you drill down, it didn't drill down into the waterproofing membrane. And then you'll have problems within the base of your, of your shower curb. So you definitely want to avoid that. Some things to keep in mind, even if you're not using a, for whatever threshold that you put here, that's something you want to keep in mind is do not drill if at all possible. Of course, when you're turning a backsplash into a shower curb top, there's gonna to be a little more effort. You're looking at something that was always intended to have two sides facing the world. You've got this outside edge and the polished edge here, which is supposed to be facing the sink. And you're ending up with an unfinished edge that you still need to somehow make it polished to match with the rest. So you'll be breaking out your grinder, you'll be breaking out your polishing pads, and turning this into a polished edge to match the rest of this. The other thing you have to consider is the finished edge, what does that look like, and how do you want it to look like in the end? Now, from my perspective, I have a modern bathroom. I have all of these edges, so I wanted it to keep, I wanted to maintain this more square edge. From a safety perspective, I give you up kids. I've got two, which I didn't consider too much before I had them. You might want to make this rounded. You might want a bullnose. So you'll be putting a bullnose on two sides. It just depends on, on if you are aesthetic wise, what you want it to look like, as well as if you're concerned about safety, if you want it to be more of a rounded edge. Now, these also have a, it's a mirrored finish. So if you're concerned about slipping, a lot of the thresholds, like for instance, the Carrera Marble that's available at Florida Decor is a mirrored finish or a high polish finish. A lot of the thresholds do come with a slicker surface. If, you are inter if you're concerned about slipping, you might want to put an anti-slipping product on here. They are 
designed so that they don't change the look of, of the stone. I myself haven't used it, so I don't know, I, I can't recommend that necessarily. It's just there's a product available out there if you're interested in trying it. Or you could send it to a fabricator to get a leather finish. It'll give it a little bit more grip so you're less likely to slip. When you're installing it after you're done finishing the edges, you want to make sure that the professionally polished edge is facing out. Now, I'm proud of my, my polishing abilities, but I know that I'm not as good as a machine that does this and that's designed to do this all day every day. So when you see the parade of traffic going by, you want them to see this beautiful polished edge and maybe a little, little less polished on the inside, which you don't have to worry about as much because of the angle when you're making the slope towards the drain. And you're considering when you're standing, taking a shower, you're looking at all of the beautiful tiles that you designed throughout the rest of the space. You're not looking down, plus the angle itself, you can't really see this inside edge. You'd be more, it would be more obvious if you didn't polish it, and you might see it, but you're probably not gonna look down and say, oh, look at that edge right there. You still wanna make sure you've got the nice edge on the outside. So it's something you wanna consider when you're actually doing the install that you don't go, oh, oops, and it'll be too late a day later when you've already done the install and you realize the wrong side is facing out. That goes right into when you're installing this. This is a very big piece. It's a very long piece of stone. It's also thicker than your normal thresholds or just littler tiles. You want to have a second person here. Get a buddy to help you install it. It'll be, you've got, if you've got turns coming through your house and you've done all the work to already have polished the outside edge, you don't want to, you don't want to, it'll be heartbreaking if it broke when you were trying to weasel it in between the, the bench and the vanity or something along those lines. And the last part is what if your shower is actually longer than the curb? Well, in my case, my shower is two inches longer than nine feet. So I had to fabricate another piece of, of the leftover countertop to turn it into a uh, shower curb as well. So you might have a little bit more fabrication if it doesn't work. I'll still give you a sneak peek here as to what it looks like there at the very edge. Now if you have, if you're looking at which edge you want to put it on, if this is too far out and it's going to be more likely to be seen, I would still recommend putting it there because it's away from the water source. It'll be away from, from where the water is pooling there. So I would still recommend putting it as far away from the shower head as possible. And hopefully you've got a, an easier spot right there where you can stash it away and not necessarily ever see it. Now let's go over some of the design decisions you may want to apply in your own bathroom. Some bathrooms are designed so that all of the horizontal surfaces match, giving it a more cohesive look. So you can see here that the countertop for the vanity as well as the bench seat and the shower curb all are blue pearl granite. Now I also designed the horizontal part of the window to have more blue pearl as well as fabricated the shelves to be blue pearl as well giving it a cohesive feel. Now, in addition to that, one of the reasons why I really didn't want it as a backsplash is I had this waterfall theme, a mosaic tile waterfall, that I wanted in the shower to be exactly replicated in the bench, going back up, also repeated in the window, as well as repeated in between the two, the two sinks here. So for that perspective, that was the reason why I didn't want to use the backsplash because I also wanted to have this cohesive feeling of tile going all the way from the corner of the sink all the way to the bench seat. This is a wet wall where you can have 
you can have water coming off as you're drying off. And I didn't want to have any any drywall. I just wanted it to be a a single a single sheet of tile coming across the wall. And you can see here, had I had I could have had the backsplash end here and then the tile end here, but again, I didn't want this area to be to be open. Tile is going to be a little bit more protective in the event of water. Now, there is a big difference between the thicknesses of the tile. You can see that the granite countertop is one inch thick and the travertine is half an inch thick. And the mosaic here is using three eighths of an inch, uh, 12 inch tile of blue pearl tile and it's three eighths of an inch thick. This is half an inch thick. So I was already back buttering a little extra on the back of the granite to back butter an extra half inch on top of that it's a pretty significant task. So for keeping this all in line, as well as the fact that I don't really want to think about what I would have to do in this corner to make that inch work, as well as this right here, the metal edges that you see here are for half inch tile. It's a Schluter finishing edge, so I didn't have to polish there. So these are all things that you want to consider when it comes to if you want to really use that backsplash, what is the configuration of your shower? What is the overall design? What are you going for? I really wanted to call this video something along the lines of how you have a free shower curtain top. Because from my perspective, I already have the tools. I already have the know-how. I'm already not going to use this granite backsplash as a backsplash it really is the perfect solution if this is something you're already, it's already in your wheelhouse. It's definitely a little more labor intensive. You can't just go to the store and buy three thresholds and throw it in. There's a little bit more to it, but in the big scheme of things, it really is the perfect solution from a durability perspective, a beauty perspective. This is an absolutely gorgeous piece of stone that is very much perfect for this, for this installation. It helps you with your waterproofing, makes your water, your bathroom a little bit more durable. So from all of those different points, it's just an absolutely perfect solution for your bathroom. So I'm hoping that this video gets your creative juices going, gives you some ideas on what to consider for your own remodel. I have included a blog post below in the details with a little more information on this subject.